Okay. Okay. So, we can do a, uh, a painting demonstration, just this very small sort of still life setup we've got here. And we've got also got Mina and Rianne yep, joining us today. Trying to help with that. See what I think of it. <laughs> um, this. It's not what I want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, yeah, I have got them. I can get them out of here. Yeah, we have time for you too, yeah. The, unfortunately, the heating broke this morning, so we're trying to keep the doors shut and keep the warmth in. I've got that one Yeah, we, yeah well, there's three of these, but the overhead heaters broke, so, <laughs> so hopefully we'll keep the, the warmth in. Okay, so I picked this as a, a sort of simple still life, just a, a, pot, a couple of bits of fruit. If anybody, any of you want to use still life objects, I've still got those here that you can choose from. But I thought for this this demonstration, I, I keep it fairly simple. Um, so last week, I I really concentrating on drawing skills, so observation drawing skills, and did a little bit on measuring. So I'm going to do some more measuring, but just a slightly different take on it this week. So last week when I did the measuring, what I was doing was I was Doing this very sort of direct motion where I'm closing one eye, um, stretching out my arm, and lining the top of the brush up with, say, some drawing the pot with this side, and then my thumb I just adjust until I get the bottom, and then just transferring that over directly like that. So this tool is very easy to draw on. So if I, if I drew that like that, um, that would probably work, it wouldn't work out too badly, but it might come out a little bit small in here. So the limitation of that is, is that sometimes everything might appear a bit smaller on your picture or, or it might just come out of the sides. And the way I tend to work is I tend to just pick something. And I might think, well, I want, really want my still right to roughly fit in kind of that sort of shape. And so if, if I'm gonna, Draw the whole whole lot sort of in that area. I think the apple probably needs to be about that big. Um, so what we'll do is I'd measure the apple, and this this is going to obviously be bigger. I'll perhaps draw the apple in, and the end is about there. And then I would then measure it over here, and then just compare that with other things. So I could compare the, the apple with the pot. So basically what I'm doing is I'm, lying, I'm holding the apple measurement and just seeing how many times that will fit in in the pot. So if I measure it that way, this is a bit too long to measure, I keep bumping in here, but it would fit in about twice. So if I, if I wanted the pot, um, so I need the, the bottom of the pot is coming down to about there. Let's try the height. So it's about two and a bit apples high. So I'm thinking one, two, maybe about to there. That would give me the whole height of the top. Um, the width of the top, that's the middle top, um, that would fit in twice. So I basically get an apple, um, the side of the pot is at an angle a little bit like that. So I can do this kind of sighting to the side of the angle. And then that needs to fit in twice across here. So that would give me the width. Then from the, the back to the front, I can compare that. And that's about the size of the apple, actually. So that's coming out about there. And then it's really what I was doing before drawing the ellipse. So I can, that's halfway through the ellipse, about to the other way. And then I, I can then start to get a nice of a little shape. As I say, I find it easy to do these ties for radiuses first and then broaden them out. So that comes that one, and that comes the side, and then the other side I just need to match that. That should be about there. And then this bottom bit, I just need to make sure that it looks similar to the top one. Um, what I've noticed quite a few people struggle with 
is quite often these bottom ones end up a little bit, a little bit square like that, mm -hmm. and then a lot rounder at the top. So what you find is this is a lot rounder than that one, mm -hmm. or or at least a little bit rounder, because that's further down. This is closer to your eye level. So that's that be, um, and then the pair. Really, I think it's just easier to just sketch that in just coming around here. So as a composition, that's a little bit over to one side, really. So if I was gonna, if this is gonna be my painting, it'd be better rubbing it out and starting again a bit further over. But I'll just do a bit of painting now. And um, so with acrylics, I tend to work background to foreground. So it probably easier to get some of this background colouring and perhaps. The, the board itself is kind of yellow, so perhaps a little bit of yellow, well, sort of slightly orangey colour. So some red and some yellow, mix and orange, but that would be a little bit too bright, so perhaps a little bit of white. And if that's still too bright, a tiny bit of blue will just tone that down a little bit. That's a bit too much. Um, a little bit more red. So I can use that as my a little bit bigger brush. So I'm, I'm using acrylic paints today, but this would be exactly the same if I was using oil paints. Um, just work some background in. Um, this surface is quite quite dark, so again I'll mix something with basically all the dark colours, perhaps some blue and red. And I've got some browns here, so I'll add a bit of that. And when when people start off painting, I try and encourage people not to use black. So once you're a bit more comfortable with it. Colour mixing, perhaps have a black, but to start with it's quite nice to just try and use colours. Quite a nice bit dark tone in here. This, some of this is actually in shadow, so that's shadow there, and there's a shadow here. Um, and I'll lighten it a little bit because some, some of this is a little bit of reflective light, maybe a little bit of yellow in the bit too. So I've got to background in, then work my way forward. Um, if you kind of squint, if you screw, screw your eyes up, it helps to reduce the, the tones, the lights and dark. So you see lights and darks a bit more. So looking at, look at this part, you've got quite a nice dark shadow here and also dark shadow here. And the light is catching this bit and just the inside bit here. Um, I've got this really bright coloured magenta colour here, which is quite nice. I'm going to need a bit more of that, so I'll get that out. And perhaps a little bit of soaking. Um, just a tiny bit of blue. And that will give me more of a shadow colour. That can come in here. And then the same. And it's a bit, a little bit brighter here, perhaps a little bit of white. Like that. And 
and the time gap for those far away. Just, just a little bit highlight on the wing. The light is catching, I think probably over, overhead lights are catching the top of the wing. So yeah, that that would be the top bit, and then basically just kind of work work your way back through the pro. You'll probably get the pairing next. Um, Just down there, it's really quite dark. There's quite a lot of shadow in there, so it's not just a darker version of this, but maybe that. So it just gradually merges out the shadows there. And then the top is reflecting a lot of light, so that's more yellow and a little bit of white. And then the last bit will be the apple. Um, quite looking for a slightly orangey red and a little bit of a slightly purple red as well. Tiny bit of blue. yellowy green there. Yeah, so, a little bit of lemon yellow, a tiny bit of the green I've mixed already. There's a little bit of shadow on the hair, so I'll mix some of the brown colour I've got there. Hello. 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 <laughs> yeah, a little bit of shadow colour here. And then where the stalk is in the middle, I'll just use some of the dark that I have there. Just try and blend. While, while the paint's still wet, just try and blend that. And um, the final bit is just a little bit highlighted. Mm -hmm. So it's a slightly, slightly pinky highlight. 
It feels a little flex. Okay. <laughs> That's basically how I go about thinking something like that. Um, and if, if you're sort of relatively new to painting, just you know, don't don't go too <coughs> ambitious to start with. That that sort of achievable learning session probably. Mm -hmm. Has any, anybody got any questions? Yep. You know, you do a circle with the top of that pink bolt, and then you're saying the bottom bit of this. Which bit is the wider circle? Do you say the top or the bottom usually? Um, I should, I should show you on a bit of paper. It's easier. Is it the top that's wider? It's well, it's like it's like the radius is shallower. It's probably easier to draw it. Uh, so what what happens is if you're so like the closer you come up to your eye level, mm. the, the the narrower that ellipse yeah. so it kind of winds out the further down you're looking. Yeah. So the bottom one would be a little, so if I took that right up to my eye level then, mm. I just see a straight line at the top, mm. but I can still see a bit of a curve at the bottom. Um. So it's a bit like that. It's probably easier to sort of demonstrate that with. So if say it was, you know, just like a tin or something like that, and. Uh, So say you had an ellipse like that on the top of By the time you get down here, this will be a little bit, maybe a bit wider. I'll exaggerate. It will be more, more like, more like that. Yeah. You see what I mean? So yeah. if you carry that ellipse around, that would be a bit wider than that. But that's only if it's sort of rough at your eye level, or even... Well, it's, it's just like anything getting close to you. So anything that's further down, you, it's going to be curved. So although this, the, the, this uh, hand pot shape, it might be the, the lips at the top slight like that, and then the lips at the bottom might be, again, exaggerating a bit, it would be more like that, just because it's lower down. But what I found a lot quite often, because we can't see all the way around there, quite often I see a lot of students doing something like that. We'll kind of strain it out too. Yeah. And it just kind of needs to come up a bit more. Yeah. So it's just something to be aware of. So would it be fair to say that the closer it is to my level, the straighter it is? Yeah, yeah. But even if it's above or below, it will be curved. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because if I then take, say, I went further up, I will take that that way. It's it's like at eye level that it's a straight line, and then if you're going up that way, it, I'm seeing something more like that, and the bottom would be. Yeah, the bottom wouldn't be quite as big, more like that, because that bit, and then in that back case, that bit is close to my eye level, but this would be curved, more curved than that bit. I mean, it's sort of simple, it's a little bit stupid asking, but saying, like, yeah, no, you know right. what you showed yeah. me the box last time? Yeah. Where it kind of eventually, if you're drawing the lines up, they meet. Yeah. And I feel like for some reason I've always tried to draw exactly well, draw, draw the same size. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think because we know things uh, like parallel, we want to draw them parallel. Yeah. Or, mm. yeah. yeah. But it's, it's trying to, trying to um, tune into what your eyes are really seeing, really. Yeah. That's really what it is. Okay, right. So if anybody wants to choose any of these objects, they're kind of here. If you if you want to work with photographs, got photographs there, but they're not still there, obviously. Yeah, that's pretty good. Rigid.